On today's episode of SNHU Explains, we talk to Tyra Davey. She's the Associate Dean of Science for SNHU's Global Campus. We talk about everything from SNHU's environmental science program to Earth Day 2024 and how we can all make a difference when it comes to limiting plastic use. So stay tuned. Can you please introduce yourself and your role here at SNHU? Sure. My name is Tyra Davey. I'm the Associate Dean of Science for SNHU's Global Campus. Um, I help to support students, our faculty, and our curriculum for our environmental science and our geosciences programs online. That's awesome. That's a super interesting field. And with Earth Day coming up, this is why we're having you on SNHU Explains. Um, But we're going to start from the beginning. And what prompted your initial interest in the world of environmental science? That's a great question. So I grew up um, in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania, and we got the gambit of all types of weather, all four seasons, um, and just the landscape there is really beautiful um, to explore and spend time outdoors. So um, even when I was a small child, it was very interesting to kind of be able to see different, you know, weather phenomena and ask a question of like, why is this happening? And be able to either be outside with that or look out the window and say, why is this occurring? Why is this happening? Um, and really wanted to really have a good understanding of the things that I was seeing outside. That's very cool. Yeah. As a uh, New Englander, lifelong New Englander, I can totally re- relate to weather changes for sure. Yes. Um, even in the last two weeks. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Especially April has been crazy because we went skiing earlier in March and there wasn't that much snow. And then all of a sudden at the end of March and April, Vermont got hit with like tons of snow. I don't um, know if the resorts were ready for it. They thought, like, no. oh, we're all done. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think some of them even closed with like two feet of snow on the ground. So yeah. definitely can relate to weather changes. So what kept your interest? Yeah. So um, I I really was fascinated, especially as I got older, um, understanding how humans impact the weather and the climate and how the weather and the climate impact humans. Like that interplay is so interesting to me um, and really kind of putting that at the forefront of that, like, you know, we're all impacted by this every day. So it's not just, you know, small talk conversation of, you know, oh, what's the weather going to be like today or this weekend, Um, which is always really kind of nice way to uh, get some introductions and some small talk out of the way, but uh, really understanding how we impact um, the environment as well as the impacts of the environment back on us. So understanding like public health concerns, safety, uh, and just people's well-being, you know, things that we can really get from nature and being outdoors um, in the positive light as well. So uh, for me, it's all about people and um, really kind of seeing and and being able to impact and and give kind of exposure and education um, to folks on how um, the environment is is really kind of one with us. So as you completed your degrees in meteorology and atmospheric science, um, were there many women in your programs? You know, during college, um, I would say it was probably 50-50. There was really great representation um, of women in our STEM fields. Um, as we were going through classes, it was really kind of a 50-50 split. And it felt like there was really good representation from faculty as well. Uh, and then I think, you know, the further along you get through your career, um, you see those changes of who kind of persists and, um, you know, where the kind of off-ramps are, whether it's either entering the career field or um, going to graduate school or, you know, continuing onward um, for a lifelong career. So, um, the one component that's really been helpful for me is uh, mentorship. There's always been a mentor or someone in my life that's been able to kind of keep me, you know, kind of pushing through um, as you hit some of those barriers and those roadblocks. Uh, and that's made just a huge difference. And I, it definitely helps with our students as well. That's great. And have you seen an increase in women in the field at all? You know, um, it, it's really shifted, um, especially during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, where everyone had to be home or um, caretakers at home as well. Um, and so kind of that family influence and those requirements have really kind of um, pushed a shift uh, backwards. Um, and so that's something that a lot of the literature and a lot of research is going on right now to kind of see um, over time how that's how that's shifting. Um, but here at SNHU, uh, we have uh, about 50% or more of representation uh, from women um, in our environmental science and geosciences program. So that's exciting to see and uh, really kind of keeping those numbers up. Um, it's really important. That's great. And speaking of SNHU, I'm kind of kind of switch gears here and, and talk about uh, the degree program. So 
What advice would you offer to someone considering earning a degree in environmental science? If you are interested in the environment and you're passionate about helping people or animals or you're outside and something bothers you and you see a piece of garbage on the side of the road, um, those are the folks that really, um, that they come to SNHU for environmental science and that passion really drives them through the program. And so if that's something where you have this natural curiosity, you want to learn more about the environment, you want to help, um, you know, that this is a really great fit for you. Um, and being able to ask those questions, that, um, talk with people who work in the field. Um, we have kind of a range of students who are either changing careers or newly interested in environmental science. Um, so working with your peers and your classmates and networking out in the field and just even sending a message on LinkedIn to someone to say, hey, I'm interested in this. Is this something, you know, what, what was your career path like? What was your experience um, when you went to college? Uh, really seeing if that's a really good fit for you. Um, and then, you know, working through the program and learning from each other is a really great opportunity. Yeah, that's great advice. And it just seems like as our weather changes more, this field is just going to become more and more important. Absolutely. Um, so what are some of the skills and outcomes a graduate with a degree in environmental science would gain? So students coming from our environmental science program are going to come out with strong communication skills, both written and verbal, uh, which is so important, whether you're talking with the public whether you're talking with other scientists, whether you're talking about policymakers, um, you'll get experience in research and field work. Um, we have a new course that offers students the opportunity to actually get out in the field and collect samples in their local environment, which is uh, really unique to an online program and is a really great experience um, to break into some of those entry level positions. Um, and critical thinking, thinking about things on a systematic level um, with the environment, there's so many facets of that that all kind of interplay together. Um, so thinking about a problem from that kind of lens of, you know, what are the impacts here? What are the cause and effect root cause analysis and things like that? And it must be interesting too, especially with an online program, because people live throughout the country, how obviously like the United States, the environment is so different depending on where you are. So it must be interesting for people to bring that into the classroom, whether they're based in California or <laughs> Texas or New England. Absolutely. Yeah. Like those regional specific issues um, that people experience in their environment, whether it's water quality or things like that. Um, so it gets to be really unique, um, which is really great for job placement as well. So you're getting experience and you're taking samples and learning about environmental issues that are really local to you, which is great. That's very cool. What are some of the roles you see graduates with this degree moving into after the program is over? We see a lot of students go into local, state or federal government positions. Um, many of our students come with military backgrounds as well, which um, really is kind of a nice transition point if this is something that they're looking for. Um, the federal government is hiring like crazy for environmental science positions, um, especially as more policy comes into play. Um, so we do see a lot of students go into those roles either um, with quality assurance, monitoring and measuring um, environmental um, impacts, remediation efforts and things like that. Um, others who are interested in uh, environmental science is such a large field. So students who are interested in, say, maybe more of the chemistry side might go and work for a lab. Um, students who enjoy going out into the field. Um, we have a lot of students who will either work for their local state park office or um, work in the National Park Service. That's great. Yeah, I actually have a friend right now. He went to school for environmental science and he lives okay. in Rhode Island. So he's in the down there. It's called Department of Environmental Management. So he Yes. That's one example of what he can do with his degree with environmental science. Um, Excellent. And we kind of talked about this already, but is the need for environmental scientists more important now than ever before? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, everyone day to day is seeing news stories about environmental issues that are impacting their local region and as well as kind of on a global scale. So as global climate change um, continues to show its impacts um, across the globe. Uh, environmental science has never been more important, uh, both for understanding what the issue is, as well as impacts on the people and the planet. Um, and so it's a really great field to get into if it's something that you're passionate about. Um, there is numerous roles and routes to be able to take, uh, whether you're interested in more kind of the planning or, you know, kind of day-to-day -day work and, and really kind of wrestling with those issues um, and, and more mediation efforts. Yeah, that's great because I, I don't think people realize how many different jobs you can actually get with an environmental science degree because there's so much you can go into. Um, so exactly. Like the environment is really. <laughs> yes. 
um, the scale that we're working at. So it's a really great um, field. And, and that's really where our, our students tend to uh, be challenged the most is really kind of finding like their niche area. Yeah. Um, being able to kind of pare that down and either get experience in, you know, water or air or um, animals or plants and things like that. So um, there's a lot of exploratory stuff that we build into the program to, to give them that space to learn. Yeah. So that's, they go through their program, they can kind of decide what they are most interested in. Like they might come in and not know. And then when they come out, they might find something they're really passionate about. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So let's talk about Earth Day. This year's theme for Earth Day is planet versus plastics. Earthday.org is demanding a 60% reduction in the production of all plastics by 2040 and are asking all, all of us to unite in taking critical steps to achieve this goal. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So single use plastics are plastics that are limited use, um, but have, you know, kind of that quick discard. Um, you know, think about a plastic bag at the grocery store. You use it come home and if you're not going to reuse it it's going to go right into the landfill um and so thinking about the comparison between kind of the usefulness of how long you're going to use that plastic versus its lifetime um and the composition of that plastic it's a very long time for plastics to break down and so um thinking about those in terms of its benefits is this going to be a long-term purchase or a short-term purchase um and that impact and thinking about that on the system level where does that plastic go when you're done with it um, is it going into a landfill? Is it getting, you know, brushed up and caught in the wind and, and then stuck in a tree? Um, maybe it's, you know, washing up in a river or an ocean. Uh, and who else lives there? We have birds and right. fish and all sorts of things. And so the impacts there in terms of timeline and composition and, and what that can really do is that breaks down, um, can really have a, a negative impact on our health, uh, both as human health as well as the planet's health. Um, and so thinking about that is once an item is produced, how long that's going to stick around and what those impacts are. Uh, and the more that we use those plastics, of course, the more that they're going to be produced over time. So right. thinking about reuse rather than uh, single use. Right. And I, I live in a state actually where they've banned plastic bags in, in grocery stores. And I just want to give you a name. I'm in Massachusetts. Um, oh, good. Oh, but, I didn't even know about Massachusetts. That's great. Yeah, it, parts of it. So uh, I'm outside of Boston. So this whole area um, has banned plastic bags here. And I will say like the reusable bags are so much better because they're huge. So instead of like 95 plastic bags from the store, I'm using two reusable bags every time yes. I go. You don't have so, like like arm. Yeah, right. Exactly. Arm from all of the bags. It's like, oh, this is actually much more efficient. It, yeah. It so even companies thinking about that in, in terms of that, it's like, well, it's going to save them money over time. They can actually sell those. So not just thinking about kind of like our own kind of personal use, but companies thinking about it from an economic perspective yep. and really being able to improve um, the quality of that kind of experience. And you've already talked about this and it's a very basic question, but why is, why is plastic so bad? Yeah, so plastics are, <laughs> they last a really long time um, on the planet. They will outlive us. Um, so the plastic bag that you use today, unfortunately, will be sticking around. Um, and of course, as things tend to break down or they get ripped or torn or broken into smaller pieces, those things can get into the ecosystem, whether it's um, animals, into the ground, with the water. Uh, so thinking about all of the things that then we're ingesting, you know, this is a huge kind of like life cycle of uh, where the plastic sits within all of that um, and how it continues to kind of transition and cycle around. Uh, back to us in, in a negative way. So what can each of us do as citizens of this planet to help achieve the goal of a 60% reduction in the production of plastics? This is a really great goal as part of Earth Day. And um, you know, Earth Day is is really just kind of a long-term movement. We pick one day to celebrate, but it's really great uh, for each year to kind of have a theme and a goal with it. And so thinking about this as kind of thinking from your own perspective as an individual, what can you do, right? Because there's so many things that feel sometimes out of our control or a business makes a decision and we just kind of are, we're just users of that experience. Um, and so I always like to spend some time outside and just get inspired first. And then I'll come back inside and go about my daily life and kind of choose one thing that I see that I'm making a negative impact on the environment and uh, working on my own kind of personal goals. So as citizens thinking about 
what's in your control? What are the things that you have habits? Um, and what are the things that um, you can really adjust? Thinking about kind of going back to that grocery bag, being able to reuse something that could even be made of recycled materials, which is kind of like um, really kind of double <laughs> a win there. Um, and taking it one step at a time. Um, sometimes it feels very overwhelming and like we don't have the tools to be able to set ourselves up for success. Uh, and so working on one thing at a time, practicing that, getting that into a habit uh, where you're not even thinking about it anymore. And then tackling something else, looking at, say, the way that you do laundry. Is there ways that you can reduce water? Is there ways that you can reduce plastic? We have those large jugs of plastic. Um, can you shift over to, say, like laundry sheets and things like that um, that have a lower impact? And it takes a little bit of research, it takes a little bit of time, but doing those small sorts of things um, can really help uh, make it achievable um, and then grow that impact. You know, then sharing what you've learned with your friends and your family. And then you can all of a sudden, you know, really impact your community um, and make a bigger impact. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Starting small, um, just by like uh, using a reusable water bottle, for instance, like we don't buy plastic water bottles anymore. Just starting like that and it just becomes normal and part of a habit. And I think that's great. So what trends are you seeing in the field of environmental science that will help make this goal a reality? We are seeing really great movement in terms of policy. For a while, we were kind of sitting stagnant. It was really hard to get anything through. And so while we can each kind of do our own part, we also need the larger systems, state organizations and states to make the changes. And so we're seeing state by state and even at the federal level, really great movement in terms of policy and rules to hold uh, businesses and organizations accountable um, so that we can really kind of make some movement um, at the scale that we need to, uh, to see the environmental impacts and, and uh, remediation efforts that we need. So what is SNHU doing to be proactive in turning the tide on plastic use? That's a great question. So the SNHU's Office of Sustainability um, is uh, fairly new. We have um, several years under their belt. Um, they're working very hard um, to look at kind of systematically what we're doing at SNHU to uh, focus on sustainable efforts. Um, and that really starts with measuring our impact. So being able to analyze the systems the vendors, all of the sorts of things that we have um, in place um, to see exactly where we can make the biggest impact. So being able to choose kind of where our big bets are um, to make the biggest impact. That was all the questions I had. Um, thank you so much for your time. And this is such a Thank fascinating you. topic. Hopefully we can talk to you again.